Hi, Mr. Mack. Sweet. Where's Alex? What's up? It's your boy Alex Mack in the building. I'm here with... Alicia Jasmina. And she's a multi and multi-talented. Would you like to list some of those accolades? Sure. I am a singer, songwriter, dancer, choreographer, and creative director. Wow. So... How did you get to this moment here, being able to live out your dreams, be able to express yourself in this way? Um, I've always done this. Um, I grew up with a stage mom, and so her dreams were singing, dancing, and theater. And so she had children young. She had three girls. I'm in the middle. And um, so she poured all of that into us, and she started putting us into creative arts very young. So I actually started dancing professionally as a child. Okay. And then I was doing like performances, performing and stuff as a child. So it's been on and off my whole life. Cool. Is there a specific moment you kind of remember growing up that kind of like kindled your love for this? Or you just knew like, okay, I'm about this. I like this. Let's, let me keep down this road. Um, I think it was always a natural thing. But I will say, so when my mom started taking us to dance classes, I think I started at four years old. Um, I was just a natural and I remember how it made me feel. I just remember feeling like I could lose myself in it. And it was at that time, I didn't know it, but I was in a, I was going into a channeling state very early with my arts. Yeah. Yeah. And so me, it was almost like a drug at that time. Like, you know, we didn't have a choice. We had to do it. But the love for me came when I realized like how high vibrational just doing the creative stuff was so I don't think I know a specific moment I just know I was very young when I realized like I wanted to be artist like professionally that sounds like it just beautifully like mended in right there I'm reading this book right now it's a old Russell uh, Russell Simmons book but he was talking about um how so many people from you know our backgrounds communities that we end up like in search for presence in the present moment we search for drugs or we search for these other things but when we reach that flow state, when we reach that channeling state, that that's pretty much the same thing that we're searching for, except we're going one direction is like numbing, and then the other one is just the most closest to divine that you can probably find yourself to be. So it's kind yeah. of like, sounds kind of like you were tapped into that at a young age. I feel like that's something that youth's kind of missing sometimes. Yeah, no, that's, that's true 100%. I think when people do do drugs, they're trying to get high. Um, and I really feel like the getting high is trying to get, have a higher vibration. Yeah. You're trying to vibe higher. You're trying to feel what only comes from source energy. Um, and so people don't know to just go straight there or to find their outlet or medium to like tap in to their source. But um, yeah, drugs is just the easier way to try to achieve that. So yeah. Are you into like spirit, uh, spirituality like that, like chakras and Eastern I, philosophy? Yeah, I'm into spirituality, but I won't say that I, I'm... I like not all of it. Okay, we just stop at zodiac signs. No, 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 no. I really like to educate myself, so just, so I can read something and have a good understanding of it, and ponder on it, and mm-hmm. meditate on it, and not always have to just say, okay, this is my thing, this is my path. So, but I will say, um, I make it a point to educate myself. I could probably learn a little bit more about chakras, but I am familiar with them and I have done some practices to try to balance my chakras in the past meditations things like that so yeah I'm a spiritual girly okay. safe to say <laughs> I think that's a good thing we're all on a spiritual journey here it's yeah. just depending on how deep into that rabbit hole you want to get right is yeah it, it I got or? my limits okay because I think curiosity killed the cat <laughs> okay. no there's nothing wrong with being curious let me take that back there's nothing wrong with being curious but if something doesn't feel right like, I'm big on, like, intuition and just, like, trusting how something feels. So even, like, certain content, I can't engage. Like, I don't watch violent movies. I don't watch scary movies. I try not to watch any violent content because it just disturbs my spirit. So why was I talking about that? I kind of forgot. What were we talking we're about? We're talking about spiritual and this is spiritual <laughs> journey, depending on how deep you want to get. So you're saying that you kind of oh, like yeah. to protect your energy and you like to kind of that's, protect Yeah, which is completely exactly fair. Everybody is, has the right yes. to do that, right? Does that mean that you kind of stray away from, like, conspiracy theories or those kind of rabbit holes? Like, where does your mind kind of go? Because you're a, you're a pensive, like, thoughtful person. So, like, do you kind of like those mental exercises? Especially because you said you like to think about it but not necessarily, like, absorb it. Like, oh, no, this is law now, right? Right. I take whatever resonates as truth for me. Okay. 
So I do kind of entertain conspiracy theories, but it gets dark. And again, I can't stay there very long. I think ignorance is bliss, yes. And to an extent, it's like you can know all of this crazy stuff that's going on in the world. But it's like the Bible says to meditate on the things that are good, the things that are pure. Like the Bible says to meditate on things that are positive and uplifting. So despite the fact that these things might be happening, I try to make a conscious effort to meditate on things that uplift my spirit. I might pray, you know, for the world in general or just like, no, I don't. I don't. I'm lying. I don't pray for the world. Um, I'll be forgetting I wish- that part. I'm saying like, <laughs> Lord, protect everybody in my family. Right. Protect everybody I care about. It's like, dang, the world. Let me just the say world. the world. Yeah. We do live in the world. You know, yeah. and it, it does affect us. So we we should all collectively play, pray for the world. Now, but- when we say the world, does that like include Mars and Mercury? Or are we kind of like excluding them? Mm-hmm. Like, they got to worry about that to themselves. We don't worry about Earth. Okay. Earth. Yeah, we just don't worry about Unless somebody from Mars or Mercury is trying to infiltrate. Pop but <laughs> Yes. You said infiltrate. Then it's like, okay. Lord, please protect that uh, weapons yeah. do not prosper. Right, right, right. But yeah. Is there one conspiracy theory that you would kind of say, like, oh, you know, I kind of, I did a little looking into, I kind of messed with? Is there one that you're interested in, Bricky? Um. Well, we were actually talking about one tonight downstairs in the other studio, me and the girls. Um, I was like, you guys noticed that there's like no, no fruit trees around. You don't just see, like, oh, I just want to pick a pear. I just want to pick an apple. You ever drove past an apple tree or really any type of tree bearing fruit? Because they really should be naturally and abundantly growing. But So that was one thing. I'm just like, but it's so many. It's so many. It's so, so, so many. And it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole. So honestly, I try. I would, like, give myself a time limit on the conspiracy theory. Because it's like, you can go on and on. Because it's. It's the damn rabbit hole. Like, it's like one thing leads to another, leads to another. It's yeah. like, nah, that's a song that never ends. Like, it never ends. <sighs> I definitely, I found myself in that rabbit hole. Like, and even then, like, one of the songs I played, uh, I was like, kind of in one of those podcast rabbit holes. And I was like, oh, let me make a song. I'm like, I'm kind of making this for me. I don't know if there's anybody out there that's going to be like, oh, dang, he's spitting right now. Which you know, theory but, was it about? Um, it was the senile song that I was playing. I, like, if I ran through some of the lyrics with you, I start off from set. Actually, look at this. Let's do it's it. It's like uh, we write it down or something. Let's do it. I realize, like, one thing that people say with my music is that because I kind of rap at a fast BPM and I'm, like, doing stuff sometimes, they're like, oh, I didn't catch, like, the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I said, hey, dead presidents making money like a Rothschild. Pull off what you think. I'm in the Pentagon reading lost files. Mm-hmm. Smart and independent. Wrecking Zeps. Rec execs be talking Green Mile, rewriting history, Mandela going senile. Oh, yeah, you got in there. You got in there. A little, little, little. You know, somebody got to be a little educated to know what you're talking about, though. Right, okay. and that's what but, I, but your music is not for everybody, and that's okay. Yeah. It don't need to be for everybody. I get that. But then there's still, still like, the artists in you where you're like, I love to be able to just press play on something. It's just like, you know, the, the yeah. masses it just resonates, but... That's you're searching for futility at you that point, right? You might have right? songs like that. You know. We we all can't be Michael Jackson, I suppose. Yeah, even that Michael Jackson conspiracy theory. Pump the brakes. Uh-uh, all right. Uh-uh. Um, uh-uh. What is your number one red flag in a relationship? Like something that you just sit there like, I've learned enough times. If I see this, I'm out. Shout out to all the girls for them. Um... Inconsistency mm. is a big one. Um, I have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I guess if you want to give you top ten, top ten. All right, let's do top five. We'll do top, top five. five red flags. Okay, inconsistency. If I catch you in any type of a lie, because why are you lying? Yeah. Why are we still lying? Well, does that mean that you're always coming with complete honesty on your side? Or you kind of like you can look and be like, all right, sometimes. I don't think you should lie to your partner. That should be the confidant, right? So, okay. So, for the most part, yes, you should be honest about everything because what do you really have to lie about? But are there situations in life where, again, I keep making reference to the Bible, Hmm. but there's a a verse that's kind of been popping up for me lately because I am kind of too honest to a fault. Like, I'm, I'm... I'm really honest. Like, I could probably get myself, like, keep less trouble happening in my life sometimes by just shutting it but anyway there's a bible verse that says don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing 
And if I understand the way I understand that is you don't got to say everything. But in relationships, I do feel like you should be completely honest. I feel like you should be completely honest. I don't think there's ever a good reason to lie, even if you might hurt my feelings. I get like omitting unnecessary information, but if it's necessary, say it. Okay, so lies, number two. Um, <laughs> number three, red flag. I feel like kind of piggyback while you're thinking for a second to, to go off to like, if you're lying, then maybe you're just not with the right person, right? Because you wouldn't have to lie to that yeah, person if they are manipulating. Yeah. That's what that is, right? Essentially, like any That's form of yeah, even withholding information. But we understand that there's a little bit of like, you know, it's manipulation. If I have to lie to save my life, sure. But yeah. other than that, like, what are we doing? Yeah, for sure. Um, number three. Number three, I would say lack of ambition. Yeah. Um, number four, a lack of spirituality or self awareness, kind of both. That's major for you. I feel like that's maybe gets missed on some people's list. But that's important to you. Very much so. Love that. Very much so. Um, and you gotta be able to learn how to love me. Like somebody who's very insistent on giving love the way they know to give it or want to give it instead of the way I need it mm. and not really having the intelligence to kind of like learn to adapt hmm? learn to adapt like some yeah, learn how to love me or compromise whatever the right word is to like make it there where it's yeah. like because that's exactly like you know something I'm sure a lot of relationships can require like you know if you're a person uh where your love language is service right so you might do every single thing all day long and be like you don't think i love you like you don't see everything yeah. but then it's like if, I, I need you to say it to me i need to hear it and it's like ah, yeah. all i need to do is that but then the people who kind of get caught up and it's like why do i have to say it yeah it's like a whole ego thing and it's not even like you said the word compromise compromise makes me feel like you have to like lose out on something when it's not really that it's more so you got to learn how people feel loved and if you do love me then it shouldn't be a, a hard thing for you to learn how i like to be loved like or how i receive love so and men are really kind of men struggle with that because a lot of men feel like if they're providing that's like i love you girl yeah i, I say that's also just not something that's even like in our conversation you know like even amongst ourselves or like how like it's maybe it's a new age conversation to like break in like i don't know like if they were talking about love languages in the 70s like that or something right but there's generational of guys that are just kind of like tuck your shit in like just kind of handle yours where yeah. it's like learning that oh there is like a you know uh the saying that i love is the it's better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war and there's, I feel like there's so many mm. guys that are, like, so fearful of turning into a gardener and, like, tending yeah. to the world because they're like, no, nah, I have to, like, be strong. But it's like that's kind of a destructive mindset, though, because what's is. a warrior? I think collectively, like, maybe men are feeling emotions on a level that maybe they haven't collectively, meaning, like, men in general. And I think... Men don't know how to deal with those emotions, so they kind of just like deal with them in an unhealthy way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's another little rabbit hole we can go yeah, down. But. Right. Yeah. Um, but for time's sake, of course. Um, is there any like personal development books or quotes or just anything that you kind of came across that you, you, you feel like just grew your character or you would recommend to somebody else if they're kind of feeling a little lost along their path? Um, I know it's like a heavy one to hit with one of the last ones. It's not a heavy one. Because uh, I do, I like books. I like to learn. I tend to do more like um, audio books. Oh, so half sure. the time I'm like finding something online and I'm just listening to it while I'm driving and doing whatever. I don't really find myself reading as much these days, but I want to. But I would say a book that, um, and I never finished my books either. I'm going to be real. I never finished them, but... I recently, I'll tell you my most recent read, which was this book called Attached, and it teaches you about attachment styles. Awesome. I learned about myself that I had a um, very anxious attachment style, and anxious and avoidant at times. So I was just learning because, you know, in relationships, 
that's another thing. Can I can I circle back to the red flag? You flag the play. If you're not learning how to be good at relationships, because come on, like at some point you have to actively learn. Life is a growing game, right? The second you stop learning, the second you become stagnant, that's when you're not living anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. And some people are just not good at relationships because we're not really taught how to be in successful relationships. So if you're not picking up a book or reading or looking at a YouTube video or doing some, or talking to an advisor or a therapist, like if you're not doing anything like that to like ensure that you are showing up in the best possible way, in your relationship like you have to be actively willing to do the work if mm -hmm. you will so yeah that's that but attached so i wanted to learn about my attachment styles because i felt like they were i noticed about myself that they were unhealthy and they were like affecting me so. and you said avoidant and resistant avoidance avoidant. and anxious and anxious and that's, so that's anxious kind of a complicated one right when you put both of them together yeah, so I think um, the ideal, I think, shit, I'm running my up. So I, well, I can't think of this. There's like an ideal state of being, like that's not anxious or avoidant. Okay. Um, and I forgot what it's called, but it's in the book. Christ consciousness. Um, hmm? That's like Christ consciousness, nirvana. That, like that, yeah. Right? They don't call it that in the book, but yeah. Something um like Where, yeah, where you just basically kind of chilling. You don't feel no type of way based on what's going on in your relationship. That's the goal, to not really be so moved by what's going on around you or just so attached to people and things. Like, I've really learned to, I've mastered the art of detachment. It does take a while. I yeah. mean, I, maybe I haven't mastered it, but I'm pretty close. Okay, I was gonna say for myself at least, like you know, when I become attached to something, like then I'm like so like you know, like uh, what's the book, the Mice and Men, you know that one, like Lenny, where he's like petting the rabbit and he's like choking the shit out of the rabbit no. because he's so like I love it, like you oh, know. Oh no no no, I never heard of it. Like uh, I mean that more like a metaphorical <laughs> level, right? Like and that's the same reason why, like with music and beats, for example, why like you know I just get so like locked in on something sometimes like that, but it's not yeah. healthy when you apply that same thing that might make you great in one field to a relationship. It's learning to mm, detach yep, in some see? ways. Yeah, that's why you got to read them books. You got to learn. Go to therapy. Like, just just work on it. Awesome. But yeah. I'm not even in, like, in this stage of my life. I mean, we met here at the studio. We're at the yeah. studio now. We're here working. That's where I am. It's all about the music for me right now. It's all about the work. It's all about, it's all about me. Mm. Like, Issa Rae, it's a me season. I don't, I don't even think relationships are even relative at the moment hmm. but then it's like relationships is everything a relationship with yourself relationship with your community yeah, yeah so, so like, a relation a romantic relationship is yeah. not relevant right we now. all have different seasons for that right so yeah i get that yeah they the man gonna be out there they ain't going nowhere yeah so anything else you want to holler at the people a uh, message or any less parting um, words I would just say if there's anything that anybody has ever wanted to do, like that you've been, it's been sitting in the back of your mind and maybe you're scared to do it because you don't want to look crazy. You don't want to embarrass yourself. Maybe other people don't believe in you. Do it. Do it. Shia LaBeouf voice. Just do it. Just do it and be willing to be, look crazy. Be willing to look crazy because People will call you, the same things they will call you crazy for now and cringe for now will be the same things they will be calling you a genius for when you make it. So. Heard it here. Want to tell people what to holla at you? Yes. You guys can find me on Instagram and YouTube um, at Alicia Jasmina, A-L-I-C-I-A-J-A-S-M-I-N-A. -A -A. Um, I do have a podcast that I did with two other girls called Thrive As I Am. So that is also on Apple and Spotify. Um, yeah, I have music, new music coming, new visuals, visuals coming. And yeah, I'm excited. So, Love it. Appreciate you. Tap it. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you. Of course.